What is going on guys? In tonight's video, I want to go ahead and just talk about the Type S packages and all the features that come along with it. Now at the end of the video, I hope to figure out if the Type S is really worth it based on the pricing alone. Let's go ahead and get this started. All right, so let's start off with the MSRP for the Type S. We're looking at the base trim right now. MSRP for the base is going to be 66,700. MSRP for the advanced is going to be 72,050. Now there's going to be a 10,000, well, sorry, a $1,045 delivery charge, a destination charge. So all in all, we're looking at 67,745 for the base and 73,095, so $73,095 for the advanced trim. So let's go ahead and just break down the base type S trim and what really differentiates it between a regular MDX. I'm going to throw up a few bullet points up on the screen. This is straight from Acura themselves. Let's start off with the new brand new engine specifically designed for the Type S. Now we found this in the TLX Type S introduced and now it's going to be introduced to the MDX and hopefully in the future the RDX. But we're looking at 3.0 liter V6 engine that is single turbo but twin scroll. It's pushing out 355 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque. Now, it's also made it to a 10-speed automatic found in the regular MDX. However, Acura said it has stronger internal, so it's tweaked to handle the additional torque that's pushing out. Uh, and also, it has the fourth-generation super handling all-wheel drive. This, the SH all-wheel drive, is going to feature. It's going to be able to put 70% of the power to the back, and 100% of that split is able to go from each wheel. So that's pretty impressive. And also, Acura is uh, able to go ahead and introduce the first ever air suspension system into its lineup. Now, from here, the TLX did not is not getting that. Only the MDX. For in terms of ground clearance, for reference, the regular MDX has a ground clearance of 7.3 inches. Now, the Type S we're able to go as low as 6.7, and then as high as 9.4 inches. Also for reference, the, I was looking at the Subaru Outback Wilderness and that one has a ground clearance of 9.5 inches. So, and that is static, right? So that's another reference point right there. It's, it's nice to have, especially in the city. Um, but let's move on to the adaptive dampers. We have uh, seven, seven drive modes for the MDX. We're starting with, uh, there's a couple of them, list them up here. Normal, Comfort, Individual, Snow, Sport, and the all exclusive Sport Plus model found in the Type S. It also features Brembo brakes, four pistons in the front, uh, painted red, and 14.3 inch rotors. Now standard on all Type S's will be 21 inch wheels. Again, I mentioned it in my previous video, shark gray design for the base model and Berlina black bicolor with the machine finish on the advanced trim. We have the new open surface diamond pentagon grille which supposedly increases airflow by 10%. And here you see that the Pentagon design or the diamond design is more hollow through the middle. So a lot of air is going through, cooling off the engine bay versus the A-Spec model, which was previously Acura's sportiest trim. And that one had like more of a solid design. Now the quad tips will also feature the active exhaust valves to go ahead and silence the make it a much more quieter drive or much more of a throaty or a sound if you go into I guess the Sport Plus mode. Finally, for the advanced trim only, we're looking at the first ever massaging seats for an Acura product. And within it, you have a couple of these uh, relaxation modes that I'm going to go ahead and maybe throw up on the screen right here. Now let's talk about the advanced trim on the Type S. And break down what you actually get for 5,350 extra above the base type S trim. Now starting with the exterior, we have the 21 inch Berlina wheels. We spoke about that. This is going to be a tri uh, bicolor uh, black and machine finish. Uh, we have your gloss black roof rails on top of that. You have your power tailgate with the ability of hands-free access and your walkway closed. In general, the power tailgate is, is standard throughout the whole MDX lineup. However, with the hands-free access, you kick under the, uh, the, the, the car and then have the tailgate open and the walkaway closed. That's available in the van trim only. So the walkaways closed is very handy uh, based on personal experience. If you have a really big Costco run and you want to make one trip out of it, all you have to do is press the button and walk away. Moving on, we have the interior. now. Uh, the most important 
is, in my opinion, the ELS Studio 3D Signature Edition. Now, this is going to be the 1000 watt, 25 speaker system with illuminated speaker grills. On top of that, it's going to have the full Milano leather with the quilted seats in the middle. So no more ultra suede inserts. It's going to be full leather. Now, along with this, you also, I mentioned it before, the exclusive Azurite Blue that's also, uh, that's only available in the advanced trim. Along with that, you have heated steering wheel and heated seats. Uh, I'm sorry, heated rear seats. Heated front seats and ventilated seats are standard. However, if you want the heated steering wheel and heated rear seats, you will need to go ahead and opt for the advanced trim. Also, it has the ability, uh, option, I'm sorry, to get the open pour wood trim versus the genuine aluminum trim on the base trim and you have the acoustic laminated rear glass. Lastly, in terms of electronics, you, you will get a 10.5 inch heads up display, your HUD and your surround view 360 camera. Now all this for 5,350 for the advanced trim. Now here's a problem I had with the advanced trim and the Type S. The advanced trim fully loaded, I would just throw up to some numbers on, on the board. The MDX, Regular MDX, sorry, with the advanced trim is 61,950. So let's round it up to 62. Type S in the base trim is 66.7. So that's $4,750 more than the regular MDX. Now, if you want to go for the advanced trim on the Type S, we're looking at 72.50. So $72,050. That's 10,100 more. The thing is, the Type S in its base trim it's already more money than the 3.5, right? So shouldn't it come with all the advanced features found in that MDX with the inferior engine? So what I'm trying to say is the gloss black roof rails, even though you could get it a la carte at 600, so that's like 300, 300 per rail, I think that should come standard along with the heated steering wheel, along with the heated rear seats, the heads up display, the 360 camera, the maybe the option for open pour wood versus the genuine aluminum trim if you want to go that route, the cabin talk feature, the power lift gate with the walkway function, the charging ports for your third row, and lastly, this is something that I might need a fact checked on, the ambient lighting. Now, based on what I am aware of, the ambient lighting is standard, however, there's different levels to the ambient lighting. If you get a lower tier or a more of like near base MDX, you get ambient lighting around the door panels, but only one strip, I believe, maybe above the door handle and also your first row footwell lighting. Now you get the advanced trim. It's going to come with the iconic drive ambient LED cabin lighting, which features 27 color themes. Now, along with that, you have LED ambient lighting accenting your upper and lower door handle, your first row footwell, your instrument panel, your console, center console, and the door pockets. Now the features and advanced package that I think are reasonable includes the ELS 3D signature sound. That's the 1000 watt 25 speaker sound with the LED illuminated speaker grills. Well, I'm not an audiophile at all, but I'm just taking a look at this. There are speakers everywhere within the interior. So when I sat in it and I listened to it, I was pretty much blown away. So after the fact, I did kind of like some research about it. And based on Acura, they worked along a side, the Carnegie Hall, the parquet section, to trademark this center parquet carbon fiber speaker setup. And this along with the same massaging seats is what Acura is trying to advertise as after a spirited drive, you sit back and relax with some music and some massage function seats. So for $4,750, is is the advanced package worth it i would say if the els signature edition wasn't included then i would say not then again there's always something to complain about right there's it's hard to make customers happy but first of all we have the type s is coming so that's something that we should be excited about but just remember remember back in the days with the with the acura beak right or the hidden exhaust outlets or the fake exhaust outlets on the mdx I think Acura has been listening to its people, to its customers, and is making changes. So to be fair, Acura is already including features such as the, on the Type S, features such as the 21 inch standard rims and the air suspension. So the fact that it comes standard really impressed me. Now I haven't really considered an MDX or really looked into it in the past, but with the 2022 redesign, especially in the A-Spectrum, 
I think that's what really drew me in. It's a nice combination of aggressiveness, sleek, but sporty all at the same time. And it's a great family vehicle. As a first time father, I think I haven't really come to realization how convenient captain's chairs could be and are. Now, the new interior, I could go ahead and remove the middle seat in the second row, creating a path to the third row. And also this creates much more room for rear facing car seats. Now with the rear cargo room, when the seats are folded up on the third row, you can still have a lot of ton of access to the rear cargo space because of the recessed floor. And on top of that, I think the A-spec trim is my favorite trim of all. However, the unfortunate thing is it doesn't come with all the techs and gadgets as the advanced package, like the 360 camera, which really should in theory, in theory help you park the car, especially during New York City parallel parking situations. So the numbers and power, the Type S is equipped with the all new 3.0 V6, the single turbo twin scroll that again is pushing out 355 horsepower and 350 foot pound of torque. Now for reference, the naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that was tried and true over, the, over and over again is pushing out 290 horsepower and 267 uh, pound feet of torque. Now, based on my calculations, that is a 22% jump in horsepower and 33% jump in torque output. Now, if we take a step back and factor in these numbers, quite honestly, the numbers aren't really that impressive. Now, don't get me wrong. I think uh, I, I really don't have a clue of how tunable these engines are in the aftermarket and how much power you could extract from it. All right? But nonetheless, I think uh, the Type S is putting out in a way similar numbers compared to its rivals. So the difference is these cars that uh, their competition is not advertising their cars as as sporty cars, right? Or not sport oriented versus the Type S, which is now, hey, we have a brand new engine is going to be sport tuned, uh, you know. So in a way, that's the difference with the Type S. And that's it might go well in terms of accurate marketing, but it might set the bar really high, in my opinion. Uh, the only reason I'm saying is because I wasn't able to drive it. So is is the power enough? I think it is for the MDX, but however it's going to blow you away, that's still to be determined. Which leads me to my next question. Is the Type S worth the premium? Now, my short answer would be no, it's not. But my long answer would be, well, it depends. Now, let's go ahead and just talk about it. If you're looking for a three row SUV, especially the MDX, but you don't have performance as a priority, then I would say stick with the 3.5 and cap it off at whichever trim fits your needs. But having said that, however, let's go ahead and keep that logic and say if luxury was not your priority, then why not consider a vehicle from another brand like right off the top of my head, the Kia Telluride. That's a hot selling car right now or stay within the family and consider a Honda Pilot, the Elite trim will go ahead and fully loaded both of these cars would still be 10K less versus an MDX in advanced trim. Now, if you wanted to get the MDX Type S advanced trim, that's 10K more, 10 grand more than the MDX in the advanced trim. So in my opinion, if performance is not one of your priorities, then I would say it's not worth the premium to go Type S. Now, if you're looking for a three row performance SUV and you're cross shopping the MDX with the aforementioned vehicles on the list, then yes, I think the Type S would be something you should be considering. Why? Because I think the Type S or the MDX in general has more standard features and it's always been versus the German rivals. Now, with the Turbo V6, the newer Turbo V6, it puts itself up there on par with the X5 M40i, the GLE 450, and the Q7. Now, having said all that, equally compared or equally equipped, the German rivals would register higher in MSRP versus the Acura MDX. Top of the line versus top of the line, the MDX and the GV80 is the most direct in competition. Now, I would be torn between, uh, you know, the Genesis and the MDX, but overall, I would probably pick the MDX. Now, the cars on this list is in a way startup trims. And what I mean by that is there are high volume sellers marketed to majority of the buyers. So when you take it up a notch in performance for the Germans, you hit their sub performance division, meaning for the X5, you have the M50i. 
for the Mercedes, you have the uh, GLE 53 AMG. And for the Audi, you have your Audi SQ7. Now, these, this is pushing out at least 500 horsepower. Take it even further beyond, you have your full-on performance division, meaning your M performance for BMW, your AMG still, but the G, AMG 63 with the bi-turbo V8s. So that brings you up to close to, if not 600 horsepower. But Honda has never in a way been like that or been after that top dog horsepower. It's always been about uh, driver engagement. It's always been about the all arounder. Now numbers alone don't mean everything. And especially coming from a guy who hasn't even test driven a car, it's like, I have a lot to say about this, right? Hey, you have a lot to say, but you haven't test driven a car. But throughout history, we all know Honda has proven itself time and time again, the fact that they produce driver oriented cars, uh, engaging cars, and they're not the fastest around, but they're really well-rounded and really, really an enthusiast car. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and touch up on these cars later on, but we can't forget about the fact that Honda's reputation for reliability has always been there. And the fact that the base MDX is already a great family car, it's really well-balanced, and that's exactly why I'm looking into it. Now, with the Type S treatment, it's adding on to the performance and the wow factor. So, in my opinion, it checks most boxes, if not all. Now for Honda Acura, I think it's headed towards a really great direction, an exciting direction for bringing back all these Type S's. Then again, for how long? Which is a great segue to my next point or my final thought. In 2022, it's gonna be the NSX's last model year run, meaning that Acura is gonna go ahead and give it the Type S treatment. From here, globally, it's not gonna be much. It's gonna be very limited, 350 to be exact. So. Here's my point. Is it me or has it been throughout history that Honda has oftentimes been overlooked or underappreciated during a car's production run? And it's only after the fact that the car is no longer being produced it becomes very coveted, it becomes very an eye opener. Let's say, for example, the NSX, the Integra, the S2000. Not much power going on. It's, it's, it has power, but not going to be top dog. However, it's the driving engagement that Honda gives us. So I think in the future, quite possibly, the TLX Type S, the MDX Type S, might fall into maybe not as highly coveted, but it falls into that category where, hey, it might not be the best car around, but it does everything right. Then again, this is a conversation for another day where we're going to be inevitably eventually be electrified um, but that is it for me guys and as always what do you guys think do you guys think this type s is worth it is it worth the premium would you guys prefer the other cars on the list but as always guys thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one take care